my dear fellow crafters, today I have for you a video full of content, uh, two art projects, even third one here, and uh, swatching. And I want to introduce you to a very, very nice new watercolors. Welcome everyone, it's Asia Marke here, Lemon Creation. And I have to tell you, I've been waiting to get my hands on these paints, uh, watercolor paints from uh, Mei Liang, uh, for uh, quite some time already, because I've seen some of the uh, video tutorials with those paints, not exactly with 52 colors, which I have just in front of me, but with Mei Liang uh, watercolors. And um, yes, they contacted me and they uh, sent me a box of paints for me to try and to make a video with. And um, I have to tell you, Mei Liang is a, a brother's company of Paul Rubens and Paul, Paul Rubens, apparently it's a very good company for watercolors. I haven't had the pleasure to uh, check them out yet, but uh, I was really, really uh, happy to get these ones and try and see how they work and uh, compare with uh, all the other reviews or tutorials I've seen on uh, YouTube. And I was, uh, I really wanted to know what this fuss is all about. And um, yes, here they are. I have to tell you, uh, honestly, I am not a big fan of the packaging. I, um, I don't like it that much. But then again, I am not working with the packaging, so I just let it be. Otherwise, they are, they are looking really, really nice. And in this packaging, which is super cool if you want to travel because it is sturdy and it is nicely done and you have all the stuff in it you actually need to travel uh, when traveling, uh, you find a few items. Um, this one is a swatch list and it's a list of colors. And basically you can see small, um, small, how do you call it, boxes. And these boxes are showing you um, the transparency of the colors. So uh, if the box is uh, completely black, it means the paints are opaque. Uh, if it's completely white, it means that uh, paints are uh, translucent. And there are also small stars beside. And I've learned um, that those stars are um, telling you about the light fast of the watercolors. Light fast, um, in general, it's, um, uh, it's something which is not prone to this color when it's exposed to the light. So uh, if the light fast is high, it means that uh, the paint will stay, the colors of the paint will stay the same for a long time. And I have to tell you, a lot of those paints are actually five or four uh, stars or asterisk. And um, so it means that they are quite, um, good light fast. I am not an expert in the matter, but I'm trying to learn and I was googling a lot and trying to find an articles to find out about that. Also in the box you have 10 pieces of papers, watercolor papers, which look very sturdy and I used two of them today for the projects I've done. And I have to tell you that they are beautiful. The only problem I have that it's not written what kind of um, weight they have and if they are cold pressed. I think they are cold pressed because they were working really nicely with the paints, but still. Then again, you have uh, a sponge, a brush, which I used also and which uh, which is quite nice. Uh, the pencil, which I didn't use because I do not uh, often use the pencils when doing watercolors, but for those of you who do that, yes, it's very useful. And then you have this um, pen, it's a fine liner and it's a pigment liner, which means that is not uh, reacting with water, which of course I put uh, to test. <laughs> <laughs> because why not? So this is a super nice kit um, for traveling, especially, but not always. Also, I'm gonna not travel with it because I do not travel that much, even though I would like. I'm gonna keep it at home and surely I'm gonna use it a lot because uh, I actually really love the watercolors which are in this kit. And um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of swatching. Then I'm going to show you those two projects I've done and I'm going to uh, divide this video into chapters. So uh, have a look. I will be happy if you watch all the video 
but if you want to skip some parts, go ahead. And um, I'm going to give you in the description box under this video um, the uh, links for those paints. They cost around $38. So they are really, for 52 colors, they are really, really uh, good for the value. And let's uh, start with the swatching. I divided the page, two watercolor pages, uh, into two columns of 13 and on the second page again two columns of 13 because uh, well there is 52 colors <laughs> so here we go my math and i did it with the um with the uni pen, pen fine liner uh, which has archival ink so it will not run with the water and what i decided to do also uh, but first i'm gonna do my small bookmark and then i'm gonna tell you what i decided to do with this watching um so I wanted to try this small pen and it writes really nicely, effortlessly and uh, yeah, I like. Uh, I am a big fan of fine liners so I can use them and there is never enough of fine liners in my stash. And look guys what I'm doing. I'm just randomly drawing um, shapes, circular ones because I love circular ones. Uh, I didn't even put it on the table because I think sometimes, you know, uh, if you overthink too much, uh, the things do not work uh, correctly. So then I put the, <laughs> this small kind of a bookmark on the table and I decided to uh, proceed with the swatches. I use a micron type uh, brush pen. It's also with uh, pigment, uh, pigment ink. And I drew uh, like wobbly uh, lines on uh, in both columns on each page. So four wobbly lines and the reason for me um, to do so is to actually show you the opacity of the paints. So um, when I will be painting over these black lines, you're going to see if the black lines uh, are getting uh, a little bit covered or uh, which means that the um, paints are opaque or if they're going to stay without uh, like, you know, really um, without being affected by the paints, which means that the paints are trans translucent. And um, this is the first time I'm doing that, but uh, this is also the first time I actually see a paint which have so many informations on it. I think Schmidtke also has a, uh, not uh, has a lot of info like that, the pigments and the uh, uh, light fasting um, uh, or light fast. Um, but for example, Gansai Tambi, I didn't uh, find this info on the box and I really love them. So it's a little bit of a, maybe a pity, but um, then again, I'm not a huge watercolor artist, so I do not mind, at least for now, that much. But I know a lot of you would mind, would want to know the uh, opacity of the paints and also the light fast. So in this box, you will have that. And so, uh, as you can see, I chose uh, turquoise, which is not a surprise because I love turquoise. But lately, I also like the um, combo of turquoise and orange. And I added a little bit of orange, didn't really overthink. And as you can see, because this kind of a bookmark is quite long, you cannot see the last uh, piece, which um, is covered by the, you know, <laughs> it's not covered, it's just off the screen. Mm, uh, and I'm gonna just uh, leave it to uh, air dry and I'm gonna proceed with the swatches. So I'm gonna be using those two papers, the one which is given by Mei Liang um, already uh, and the ones uh, I made. The first few swatches I'm gonna make um, without speeding up the video, uh, talking with you a little bit. I started with white, which is almost unnecessary because white, you know, won't give you really a, a visibility. I could have uh, actually checked the white on the black paper, uh, but uh, I forgot. <laughs> but at least you're going to see the opacity. It's like uh, half opaque. Um, so you can see that it's actually um, covering a little bit of this black line. And you're going to see that even better when it's dry. And then I'm going to proceed with all the um, other colors. I was changing the paintbrush. The one I'm using right now is the Fumui uh, paintbrush. It's from the natural, uh, natural hair, I think. 
um, and it's quite nice but I also used the one which was included in the box with the watercolors and I was happy with this one as well and sometimes I'm gonna be adding water um, to the swatches uh, to the paper before I add the paint and sometimes I won't it depends <laughs> if I forgot or not it's that simple with me and so like that you can see that I am not an expert on watercoloring but still I love it very very much and I really enjoy that. I've never had so many paints also. It's so cool to, to have so many uh, paints. Uh, especially for people who are uh, who don't want to bother with mixing uh, watercolors or um, who don't know still how to mix watercolors. And, uh, you know, you can get really a lot of shades of... Um, which are quite similar actually. There are some shades in this box which are quite similar um, to to the other, one to the other, like, uh, you know, the kind of doubles almost. But um, upon close um, looking, you can see that actually they, they are not the same. So that could be really good for uh, blending uh, a few colors together without having, you know, um, the big difference between the colors. And um, there is a lot of skin colors, I think. Well, not a maybe not a lot, but there are uh, quite few uh, nice ones. Even those uh, first ones are really nice. Then there is a lot of browns also. Uh, but uh, in all, you have really a big, um, big uh, variety of colors, which is normal if you have 52 colors. Some of you may not want that many. Uh, which is understandable, but uh, for those of you who who like to have a lot of colors, um, these ones are really not bad. Um, once again, I got those paints, it's true, and um, but I don't feel obliged in any way to, you know, to just say that uh, I love everything about them. As I said, I am not fan of the box, I find it a little almost cheap looking, I'm sorry to say that, <laughs> I know they are watching, but uh, this is just something, um, uh, it's maybe not my cup of tea. Uh, but if it comes to paints, uh, I really do love them. Uh, the amount is maybe huge, I don't know if you really need that many colors, but then again, if you do a lot of uh, detailed drawings or flowers or faces or things like that, I guess. It's very handy to have them. Uh, there are, I think, two colors, two set of colors which are quite similar um, to each other. I'm gonna actually let you know. Um, I think one is rose red and the other is Queen Nacridon rose, which they are, they are really quite similar. And then the blues, I think cobalt blue and ultramarine blue, but uh, you can see the differences actually. So I hope you can see them. You will see them on the swatches I made, but I can see them by looking at the swatches which are in my hand. So, um, yes, and um, because I work with the, um, a lot with um, Gansai Tambi from Kurateke, um, and I absolutely love these paints, and they are Japanese paints, uh, I can tell you honestly that these ones are. I think as good as the uh, Gansai Tambi. No, really, for now, I made two projects with it and uh, a lot of swatching. <laughs> and this is my impression. This is my uh, impression after the, the very first use. Uh, but uh, I think the color brightness and, um, and the choice of color is really nice.
So today I am experimenting. This is going to be the first of my experiments. When I started doing um, this um, kind of journaling, yes, on the uh, landscape oriented uh, piece of watercolor, which was included in this box, I didn't know if I'm going to finish and turn it into a journal page or if I'm just going to try to mix the paints and see how they work together or what is going to happen. Um, but um, as you've seen at the beginning of the video, I actually uh, made um, art journal pages out of it. And if you've not, if you've watched uh, my previous videos, you know that I am, I really like working in this format of the paper. And the long one, the landscape oriented, um, I find it, I don't know, very liberating almost and very zen to me. And so, um, yes, um, this is, this came, uh, this watercolor paper included in the box came really handy to me. Um, I don't know if you're gonna like it, but I do. And I am trying uh, very hard to make a rainbow and make the colors run uh, into each other. I was very happy with the colors I chose apart from the blue one. Uh, the blue one actually turned turquoise and I didn't want that. Um, but then again, <laughs> I was kind of, you know, just choosing uh, colors, um, looking very quickly at the swatches and uh, thinking about the rainbow. And um, otherwise, I really like the way the colors uh, melt into each other especially uh, I don't know the um, the red one and the uh, orange one they look so so cool the red one is almost like a granulated watercolor uh, at least it worked like that I think uh, it was the um, effect of the water I think I put uh, quite a bit of water there and it made a kind of pulse and the paints got uh, stuck uh, together and uh, look, um, the red one is reacting very well to water, to the uh, splatter, but uh, the other colors, they do not react too much to the splatter simply because they weren't uh, as dry as the red color. So I put the first page away to let it air dry and I will come back to it a little bit later to do a little bit of um, splatter again when it's a little bit more dry. For now though, I'm gonna be doing um, the page number two. And I'm gonna be doing the trend which is, or the technique which is very, very, very popular since I think at least one year. I see it everywhere on Pinterest, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, it's basically you, you take a circular object like a lid or from something, you put the paint on it and then you add, um, you press it to the paper to get a circular shape and then you add water with a brush inside this shape. I did uh, actually a Valentine card like that using the <laughs> cookie uh, cutter in the shape of the, um, of the heart and it works uh, really nice so you don't have to do it only with circles. You have to be a little bit precise when you do that so the um, water doesn't go over the uh, shape, over the edges of the shape. But otherwise, you know, you can just um, add as much water as, or as little water as you want. And I'm going to be doing these circles with different colors and different um, sizes. So once again, I'm going to speed up the process because... Um, because there is no really <laughs> anything interesting to add to this technique. Ah, this one is, you know, I decided to actually uh, print it once again and look how the paint beautifully reacted with the water, which was uh, already on the paper. So you can also do that if you are sure that you're going to stamp, uh, you know, in the correct uh, place. And I am back to my first page to add a little bit more of the splatter and the paint are almost dry. They are almost dry, but a little bit still uh, wettish. So um, it doesn't want to focus. Oh, now you can see it makes this beautiful uh, kind of uh, flowers on the watercolors, which is super cool. And here is my dry bookmark. Please focus. <laughs> it looks really nice. I love the colors. Uh, I'm going to be adding a little bit more because, well, because I can. <laughs> A little bit of more turquoise and uh, blue and uh, just add a little bit of shape to fill up the uh, bookmark and I let it air dry. By the way, the second layer of circles which are overlapping the first layer, I added when the first layer was already dry. So like that, I was sure I'm not gonna have um, 
too much water running everywhere and that I can actually <laughs> manage and uh, make it something nice instead of making just puddles of water everywhere. So here are the swatches and my two pages, already dry, uh, beautiful effects, um, they look so nice. I use uh, on purpose translucent paints, so like that you know you can see one uh, picking up or picking out from the background, <laughs> not sure um, that's a good expression but here we go. And this one look at the beautiful uh, effect it gave me. Once again, I'm not very happy with the blue, but I dabbed it a lot and I think maybe this uh, made it uh, a little bit of, uh, well, less effective. So I have to tell you, I was enjoying the process and I didn't want to leave it uh, the papers like that without finishing it. I decided I, go f I will go for it and I will make art journal pages out of those two. And uh, it's been a long time, it's been a few months um, since uh, last time I worked on the landscape oriented piece of paper like this one. So I kind of really fancy doing it. Uh, for this particular one, uh, I'm going to be using or I'm using my branch out new set of stamps because I was thinking it's so beautiful and colorful and I think the branches just look uh, really nice uh, with it. And uh, I decided also to use my stamping platform because I was not sure how the stamps will stamp uh, since it's watercolor paper and since some of those stamps were never actually used, they are brand new. And I'm using VersaFine um, Onyx Black uh, ink, which is an archival ink, but it dries quite a long time in comparison to Stazon or uh, archival ink from Rangers. So you do have to be careful uh, and um, if you want to work uh, quickly after stamping with this ink, uh, please be careful because it can actually, um, mm, you know, stain and it can transfer. But it's very good. It's a very good ink, the best one for the intricate pattern for a small uh, details. So this one is uh, my one to go <laughs> to. And uh, you're gonna see in a moment that I actually made some transfer on the white um, board of this paper, but uh, my uh, eraser, um, mono eraser, it's coming really handy. And every time when I do a small mistake like that, small transfer of the ink, uh, I can um, basically remove it always with it. And uh, yes, so I added a lot of branches. And they are stamping quite nice on this paper. Mm, I think it's kind of like a fine or medium grain. I'm not sure I'm not an expert in watercoloring, but if you use watercolor uh, paper to stamp things on it or stamps on it, uh, I rather advise you to use a stamping platform because um, yes, sometimes you may uh, get an image which is not very clear and then, um, well, <laughs> It's hard to hard to get it better if you, uh, you didn't use the stamping platform. I decided to add a few small details uh, with the foliage uh, by hand because I knew uh, at this point that uh, the stamping is uh, going pretty well. And in places when I was missing like a tiny bit of branch or tiny bit of leaf, I uh, added it with the fine liner. 
And as a focal point, I'm gonna go, um, add two birds from Alexandra Renke, those two nice ones. Uh, and the page is so colorful, but I absolutely love it. As you can see, I'm not only the grunge artist, there is still a lot of child in me. And I, as I said, I absolutely love this page. Uh, the second one is gonna be a little bit more on the grungy side. No, maybe not even. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more toned, more uh, <laughs> less colorful. I uh, blacken the edges with the archival ink. And I'm gonna add quite a lot of stamping here. Uh, once again, for stamping, I'm gonna be using um, Onyx Black Versa Fine Ink. Uh, and I am using, uh, once again, my stamps, different ones this time. And I'm gonna give you guys, as always, the link to my uh, shop in the description box below, uh, in the pinned comment also. I'll be really happy if you um, just have a look there and see what kind of products I'm designing. Uh, otherwise, the full list of products with the links will be also attached uh, or um, yes, written in the description box below and uh, all the links for the uh, Mei Liang uh, watercolors you're also going to find there. Uh, those are my not my affiliate links. Um, I'm not getting paid in any way for this, uh, for this video. I just wanted to try really honestly. I wanted to try these colors because I heard about them uh, since a long time. And um, I always love having new watercolors. So uh, yes, that's why I've done it. Uh, I am adding a little bit of script um, or typography stamping in the uh, bubbles, but not too much and very lightly uh, stamping it. Uh, so they won't take away from the uh, beautiful bubbles and beautiful um, uh, effects the water uh, done there with the color. And um, well, what more? Ah, I'm gonna be adding one of my uh, DG files, DG, um, DG, 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 small child. Um, I have DG files in my uh, shop also, and um, I made them, or I made them. I didn't make them. I purchased them to make a collections of team team related uh, DG files, which. Could be used for focal points. Uh, beforehand, I was uh, trying. I was always finding something on the Pixabay, but since you could uh, access this site um, uh, free of charge and download the uh, images free of charge, uh, it was very time-consuming. You had to browse through pages and pages before you actually found an image. Before I actually found an image, which was nice. So uh, later I decided to actually buy um, team related images from Etsy and then I decided to actually um, buy for an access, uh, buy a subscription for, um, for a site which are offering the uh, digis already done. And like that, I have them in the team related um, or I put them in the team related um, bundles and they are uh, accessible to or ready to buy in my shop like that. You don't have to browse. You can um, find them uh, already prepared and then you can print them um, to your liking, the size you want, the paper you want, and you can use them on your projects. So uh, the two projects are done. I finished them both with uh, really silly words from my shop. I am wondering which one is your favorite. I'm wondering what you think about Mei Liang uh, watercolors. Uh, as I mentioned, the links to the uh, watercolors are in the description box below. And I am really, really um, looking forward to know your opinions about those two projects, about the colors. Um, and I hope I'm gonna see you in the next video. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for hitting the notification bell button. I'd be very happy if you share this video with your friends. And um, I wish you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful and crafty day and uh, see you soon in my next video. Sending you big hugs, guys. Bye bye.